I-24 News has spoken to the advisor to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky about a range of developments nearly 18 months into the Russian invasion or what Moscow calls a special operation. Mikhailo Podolayak telling Ayana Soyadnaya in an exclusive interview that if Jerusalem were to agree to supply weapons to Kyiv, there is no risk that they will land up in Tehran's hands. Let's take a listen. Mikhailo Podolak, advisor to the office of President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, good afternoon. Good afternoon. President Zelensky said several days ago that the attempted Prigozhin rebellion greatly affected Russian power on the battlefield. From what you can say, do you see already any change on the battlefield? We see a certain demoralization among the Russian soldiers. We're seeing a certain level of conflict among the strategic command because there are certain measures by Defense Minister Shoigu to move certain generals and limit their possibilities. We see a certain lack of coordination in several directions of the battlefield. This will have cumulative potential. Over time, these problems of command in the Russian army will increase. Especially in light of the fact that Prigozhin's unsuccessful rebellion highlighted the weakness of the chain of command and a high number of internal conflicts among Russia's power structure. And thus, President Zelensky is right. How immediate, to your knowledge, is the threat to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and do your partners in the West share your concerns? Of course there are risks, and it's possible to talk about it openly, because for the first time there is no appropriate assessment of these Russian actions. It blew up the Nova Kakofa Dam, and this is already a violation of the 1977 treaty, which concerns the use of exploding large objects as an indiscriminate weapon. Russia currently also controls the territory where both the Titan plant in Crimea and the Zaporizhia nuclear plant are located. It puts mines in these places and does it openly. And it can use these objects as a tool to put pressure on the public position in the West and in Ukraine, and to show inside Russia that they have the ability to influence the negative developments on the front. The risks are clear, and I think the information element here, when the president and other officials talk about it publicly, increase attention to these things and also, in a way, scares Russia. I mean, we're saying here, we see what you're planning, where you put mines, and this reduces the risks a little regarding the reaction of the world. Unfortunately, there's currently no appropriate response to the issue. The International Atomic Energy Agency and the UN are not showing that they understand all the risks here. Let's talk a bit about Israel's stance. Last week, Ukrainian ambassador expressed harsh criticism. This week, he was invited to the foreign ministry for, for clarifications. He said, I quote, while the people of Ukraine are bleeding under the onslaught of Russian missiles and Iranian drones, the Israeli leadership hiding behind verbal demagoguery about their neutrality actively forges relations with the Russian Federation. In reality, on the ground, the so-called neutrality of Israel government is considered as a clear pro-Russian position. Will you agree with that? I look more pragmatically at Israel's position. I understand all of Israel's internal challenges, including territorial challenges. It's clear what role Russia plays in the region, including in Iran, and what risks to the region's security Russia creates. I understand that and therefore think the rhetoric should be more careful. An understanding of both Israel's internal problems and Russia's regional influences must be conveyed. At the same time, Ukraine has been in the midst of an exhausting and large war for 16 months, with Russia concentrating all the tools at its disposal here, including ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, drones that are manufactured by Iran, and we both understand this very well. Such a large scale of war allows Ukraine today to speak and demand clearer support from the countries that are democratic. Why am I saying this? Because Israel is a completely democratic country that plays an important role among democratic countries as a whole. And this war is about the essence. Either democratic countries win this war and prove that democracy cannot be broken, or Russia will prove that authoritarianism and the rule of force have stronger tools than the tools that democracies have that take care of internal processes in their own countries. Many leaders from neutral countries have visited Kiev already. How do you explain Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu still not making a visit? 
Дуже гарне питання, було б безумовно бажано, щоб прем'єр-міністр Ізраїлю This is a very good question. It would be desirable for the Prime Minister of Israel to visit Kiev. It would be symbolic. This would have emphasized Israel's basic understanding of the nature of this war, why the sovereignty of each country is very important and must be protected, and the freedom of its citizens. It could have been very symbolic also for the region where Israel is located, and where there are difficult conditions of existence and great challenges for Israel. Of course, we would consider such a visit positive. But I want to look at this question more broadly. I think it's impossible today to continue to sit on both chairs, because this war poses big perceptual questions. Which side is each country on? And what does it want strategically in the near and long term? I think Israel needs to show more leadership today. It could have been much better and more important for Israel's reputation than the position it holds today. And I emphasize again, I understand the Israeli position and its regional challenges. But it seems to me that after 16 months of war, in which Russia is obviously not winning, it would be desirable to demonstrate international leadership, including on the part of Israel. It's necessary that an analysis of the situation be made in accordance with the strategy of the state of Israel's reputation and five, ten, or fifteen years, and after that, it seems to me that certain steps will be taken in favor of Ukraine. Again, I want to emphasize Russia will lose this war, and its political elite will not continue to exist in its current composition. The governmental structure of Russia is going to change, and I think that for many countries it's important to build a different reputation for themselves regarding the relationship with Ukraine, with Eastern Europe, with Russia, which is going to look different. In his last comments, Netanyahu said that Israel is afraid to supply its defense systems to Ukraine as they can reach Iran. How you can respond to this? First of all, Iran receives all its aid on a huge scale from Russia. This includes defense systems, aerospace surveillance systems, S-300, S-400 systems, also offensive systems and certain technologies. That is, Iran already has a partner that can provide it with military technologies on a large scale. You should not close your eyes to it. Secondly, Ukraine receives a lot of weapons from its partners today, and all these weapons are being monitored, how they're used and where they are. Our partners see this, and that's why they transfer the weapons and are not afraid. If at the beginning of the war there was concern where these weapons would be, today there's no such thing, because a strong monitoring system was created. Therefore, the risks regarding heavy weapons, especially the defense systems, systems that control the airspace, reaching third countries are not possible. Of course, if Israel decides to transfer one or another weapon, it will be integrated like other countries in the surveillance system, and will understand exactly where and what it is. Of course, it's possible that some gun will disappear from the battlefield, but you understand that this is already a joke. Everything related to heavy weapons, everything is documented and monitored. Therefore, there are no risks that Iran will receive something made in Israel that will be in Ukraine. Mikhailo Podolak, thank you for this interview. Thank you.